little denim review tonight. Um, picked up some new jeans recently when I was up in London. Um, these are the Ironheart Triple Fives 01, and that means that they're in their signature 21 ounce uh, selvage denim. Um, really what makes Ironheart famous, I think, is the, the quality of their 21 ounce denim. So, if you follow my channel, you know that I really do like um, selvage denim. I like to sort of go the, the raw way and let it sort of pick up the fades. Um, you'll also know probably that I've had some iron hearts in the past. Um, the 25 ounce um, Beetle Busters, the IHX B01s. Um, those were really kindly uh, offered up to me sort of second hand from a guy on the Iron Heart forum. Um, they're in a more traditional cut, um, not necessarily my preferred cut. Um, I prefer a really slim cut, and that's exactly what you get with the 555. So they're called their Super Duper Slim. Um, I think it's got a slight taper on the on the calf, um, quite a relaxed sort of top box, but the tapered leg. So you've got that mixture of comfort and uh, and slender leg, which is really the, the look that I like. So really love these. Um, still wearing these great uh, winter jean. Um, with with a sort of a heavy boot, certainly sort of a, a red wing with a Christie sole or the thoroughgoods with a Christie sole look really good with them. Um, but these are a cut which I'll wear more regularly throughout the year, I think. The strange thing with these um, was that it's got a really high rise. Um, these are sort of a medium high rise, but these were really quite high and that meant that the 33 waist um, was actually quite a challenge for me. Um, these are a 32 waist and fit absolutely fine. So interesting point to pick up there on the rise and how much that affects the sizing that you might choose. So um, I picked these up in London, picked it up from Rivet and Hyde. Um, my first uh, sort of bricks and mortar um, denim retail experience really. Most of the, re uh, the denim I pick up is online. Um, and whilst companies like Hyde are really nice to deal with, it's always a bit of an uncomfortable experience when you pick up several sort of different sizes, several different cuts, and you end up with, you know, maybe in the, in the case of Hyatt's, I think I've had a situation where I've had two different uh, waist sizes in two different uh, cuts. So I had four pairs of jeans, so almost a thousand pounds worth of denim pinging back and forth in the post. Um, not the most comfortable feeling sometimes. So to go somewhere with bricks and mortar was absolutely fantastic. Um, I'd spotted rivet and hide online and I uh, hunted them out in London just a little bit out of the centre so they weren't super busy and they could give me that really good um, sort of hands-on service and indeed they actually hemmed these um, there and then they trimmed off a little bit off the uh, off the cuffs or off the legs um, just to get that perfect fit um, so really really good actually having a bricks and mortar uh, denim buying experience they had lots of stock um, I headed straight over to the Iron Hearts. There's something about Iron Hearts. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I really do like them, and uh, I do like heavy denim. I do think it gives the best fades. Um, well, that, that's the sort of the conclusion I'm drawing over time. Is that the heavier the denim, the better the fade. Um, so yeah, really good experience with Rivet and Hyde. Um, interesting for them to sort of help me get that right uh, cut. So the right right product and also the right leg length because all iron hearts come in a 36 leg um, which you know obviously people cuff their jeans but 36 is a really long leg and uh, to be able to trim a little bit off it even if you're going to cuff it still um, it allows you to come up with sort of some reasonably sized uh, cuffs obviously on the beetle busters still 36 inch leg um, but the cuffs that I've had put in to, uh, to get the right length for me. A little bit more chunky than I like. Um, on the 555, so now that bit that's come off, I can do a sort of double cuff, and I'll do that in a minute, um, and get that really nice, tight cuff. Um, show off the selvage, but not be sort of too excessive, too exaggerated. So they, they hemmed it there and then, and I'll cut in a little bit of footage now, I think. Um, because it was really, really nice to see that done and they were really happy for me to film a bit of it because I was really interested to see it. I was a bit geeky about uh, denim and uh, it was exactly the place to do that.
Right, okay, that might be a deal breaker for me. So like if, if, if I watch them immediately, am I good or do I have to do it a couple times? Uh, like So now you've seen how they've cuffed it, or how they've uh, hemmed it rather. Um, really, really clean uh, chain stitching they did. Um, sort of as good as, as it was out of the factory. Um, and we'll come in for some close-ups in a minute, take a proper look at the jeans. Um, but whilst I'm still sort of talking about that, um, really interesting to see on this, um, the different threads are actually a thickness of the, uh, the weft threads, the, the undyed threads which go across um, perpendicular to the selvage, you can sort of start understanding where the weight in these jeans comes from because that, that weft is really um, heavy. Um, the warp, which is the, the vertical or the, the run, ones that run um, parallel with the selvage edge are the ones which are indigo dyed and obviously they have a white core still and that's where the fading comes from the outer indigo dye rubs off exposing the white inner core so nice um, experience to see that done um, and really sort of quite uh, interesting for a, a denim geek um, so these will be sort of cuffed up with a double cuff um, quite nice and tight Something like that. And that just gives me a perfect length. Still allows a little bit of stacking, um, which is important, because uh, what I've noticed, if you don't allow stacking, um, I find the legs hang too straight, and it almost looks um, sort of almost like a uniform. Um, I did that with some uh, black chinos, uh, black selvage down chinos, and it really put me off the look. It looked too formal, it did look like a uniform. Um, so a little bit of stacking, pick up a couple more fades, absolutely fantastic. Um, so I think we'll probably come in for a few close-ups. We'll pop them on. Just coming in to we'll look at up. a bit of the detail on these. Um, obviously you've got the um, very thick, heavy duty, um, sort of um, untreated leather patch there. The indigo snake, I'm not quite sure where they get these sort of names from. As far as I know, this is simply the 555s, but they always come up with some extra sort of uh, imagery and um, sort of legends up here. Looks pretty cool. Obviously that will patina over time. Maybe you need a little bit of leather conditioner to keep that nice and supple. Very heavy, as I say. Um, the pockets, nice contrasting stitch. There's a mixture, I think, of sort of a thicker yellowy thread and maybe a slightly more orangey, smaller gauge thread. The Ironheart Works logo there, it's a contrasting red, which is quite nice. On the previous Ironhearts I had, that was in a, you know, sort of colour matched indigo, which, you know, it just looks a little bit cooler in red, I think. Um, the arcs at the back here are in an indigo thread, so as time goes on, they will start to pop out as the rest of the denim fades around them. The pockets are lined with, with thick cotton, which will stop your uh, wallet popping through. Um, bar stitching at the top. An interesting extra so little box stitch up on the, uh, on the inside there. It's not extra nice little bit of detail. 
obviously all the stitching on these uh, is of impeccable um, given the thickness of the denim it's uh, really quite impressive that they maintain this quality of stitching the yoke has got a nice thick stitch on it obviously the the belt loops super thick um, bar tack I think they call that around there all very neat and tidy on the cuffs obviously selvage and where it hasn't been cuffed yet you can see this is the stitching that was put in at River to Hyde on their Union machine as you saw earlier perfect um, stitching interesting the first first run of it um, was all pulled out because as you sort of fold it down tight you don't always get it perfect the first time so the first run is almost a sacrificial run just to get it all grabbed down take it all out again and go over it again and that's the that's the result as I said earlier looking at the the threads on the cutoffs there you can see where the weight of this denim comes from really thick so flipping over to the front so you've got a button fly as you'd imagine five buttons contrasting copper rivets and those patina really nicely over time um, if I just quickly grab over the the 55 ounce, or sorry, 55, 25 ounce jeans. You can see they've got really good darkening and a bit of um, green patina, verdigris, I think you call it, where the copper oxidizes. Like you see on sort of nice um, sort of architectural roofs where they go all nice and green and buildings. You can really see the uh, the quality of the fades that come through on a on a heavy gauge denim as well. There, I do believe the whiskers are less numerous, but the the sort of peaks and troughs are much more exaggerated with the thicker denim. That's my uh, that's my observation. So nice sort of strengthening feature there in the crotch. WKS branding on the inside of these. No unnecessary branding on the pocket liners or anything much going on there at all. In fact, actually, on the back, all you get is a single hanger. No sort of big pocket covering. I do quite like that. I do like to have something to read. Um, five pockets, pretty traditional. Um, some of the Iron Hearts do have a a sort of little knife pocket in there, but not on these. Yeah, looking really good. Um, as you can imagine, all nicely finished, reinforced on the inside. It's top quality, handmade Japanese denim jeans. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Um, as these wear in, um, I'll do some updates, uh, probably around about the six month mark if it's getting some serious wear. Um, it probably will have had a soak maybe in that time, but not its first wash. Um, I do think soaking is quite important to um, stop the sort of stress around the rear of the knees. I always seem to blow out uh, denim on the rear of the knees. Um, and I do think that's because of the ingrained 
sort of debris that you get through through not washing it regularly. Um, never find the jeans get smelly, never had to freeze them in the, in the freezer or anything like that, I just hang them up every night. Um, but uh, your mileage might vary. So, as I say, that's about it. Um, if you haven't seen my channel before, please check it out. I've got a few other jeans reviews over the years, um, quality footwear, Red Wings, Thoroughgoods, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, and other sort of hobbies of mine, interests like everyday carry, fountain pens, pen knives, um, cycling, guitar. Um, check out the channel, we might find that we share some other common interests. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, I'd love it if you subscribed. Okay, well I hope that's helpful, and I'll see you for the next video.